This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here, and I've been using the Mac Mini as my main desktop computer for the past month now. And I have some updated thoughts on what I previously called Apple's best Mac desktop. And quite frankly, I said it was the only one you should buy. So one month later, was I fooled? Well, let's get down to the basics. I think the one reason why so many people are just downright picking this computer over other M1 Macs is how versatile it is. The port selection is currently the best out of the M1 Mac lineup, and you could get by with even just the two USB-A ports, two USB-4 Thunderbolt ports, the HDMI port, the Ethernet port, and of course, the headphone jack. However, even for myself, I do like a little bit more in my port selection, which is why I use this Thunderbolt dock that Anchor sent over to me. Uh, I do like getting a lot more ports on it, but the main reason I do use it is so I can get my SD card slot back. Also, because this Mac Mini does have all the ports you basically need, you can easily connect external drives to this desktop Mac, and you can either get pretty cheap solid-state drive storage or expensive but fast Thunderbolt 3 storage that is still going to be cheaper than upgrading your Mac Mini's internal storage to those higher-end storage configurations. This works out really well because the Mac Mini is a desktop computer, and unlike the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro, it probably won't be leaving your desk all the time. However, even though it is a desktop and will probably stay in one location, the Mini does have a compact form factor. The compact form factor of the Mini isn't something you think you would care about for a desktop that really doesn't travel around with you, but it actually is something that I value, and I think you might value too depending on how you use this computer. For example, I've been shifting my Mac Mini depending on my setup, so if I want to go stream something, I bring it to over where I do my streaming, and it's a very easy computer to lift up and bring over to that location where I run my dedicated streams. If I'm going back to do some video editing, I can quickly unplug it and bring it over with the power cable, plug it in with the Thunderbolt cable to the monitor behind me, and I'm back again working on my desktop setup. This is probably a bit of a niche use case, but I can see people using the Mac Mini as their desktop, transferring it over to their TV, or bringing it with them somewhere to run a stream or just some other setup where you need that power. It's not as portable as a laptop because there's no built-in display and no power source, but the small size and the amount of peripheral connections does make the Mac Mini very versatile. Now, although I do have M1 MacBooks, I've also tried to tailor my experience when working on my Mac Mini to treat it as my only computer, and I've tried using solutions to make it into even more of a portable setup. And the best way to do this at home is to use Apple's sidecar feature. I mainly use this with my iPad Air, but you can use it with any of Apple's iPads, even down to the cheap $329 regular iPad model. With Sidecar, when I want to plop down on the couch, I can bring my iPad Air with me and still get full access to Mac OS. It works beautifully with a keyboard case, which will receive all of the keyboard input so you can type away with your iPad. If you have a Bluetooth mouse or trackpad and are still within range of your Mac Mini, you can pretty much use this as a standard Mac, as long as you're in the house. And of course, the Apple Pencil works too if you're in an area where a mouse isn't going to work. The Mini, as I slayed it in my last video on it, is also a creative powerhouse of a computer at an amazing value. I really don't think there's any computer out there, especially on the Mac side and maybe even on the PC side, that can compete with the raw value of what the Mini currently offers to a wide range of creative professionals, including video editors, photo editors, music producers, developers, and so on. That, of course, is thanks to the M1 chip, Apple's first attempt at using their own Apple Silicon inside of this computer and they absolutely nailed the first attempt and exceeded even my wildest expectations on what they would be able to accomplish on these entry-level machines. Since using the Mac Mini for about a month, I've done extensive testing on my previous powerhouse Intel machines, like my eight-core i9 iMac, 
with Vega 48 graphics and 40 gigabytes of RAM, and my 16-inch Intel MacBook Pro with an 8-core i9 processor, Radeon Pro 5500M graphics, and 32 gigabytes of RAM. And while I couldn't test every metric, for the most part, for what I use my computer for, which is video editing, the Mac Mini smoked those machines in export times. It was able to export a 4K 10 minute clip to ProRes in three minutes and 12 seconds, while it took the 16 inch MacBook Pro seven minutes and 15 seconds, and it took my desktop iMac six minutes and 27 seconds. Don't forget, the MacBook Pro and iMac are both machines that at their specifications, are above $3,000, and the base model Mac Mini just absolutely ran past them in export times. Even the graphics are a huge step up from the previous Intel Mac Mini, and if you set your expectations correctly, you can enjoy games made for the Mac at low to medium settings. Don't get me wrong, this still isn't a gaming PC, and you shouldn't be purchasing one for gaming, but some casual games work on it fine, even through Rosetta 2 translation. All right, I actually wanna talk more about my experience with the Mac Mini and some shortcomings and mistakes I didn't address in my initial review that I don't want you to make. But before we do that, you shouldn't make a mistake when building a website either, which is why you should do it the fast and easy way by using our sponsor for this video, Squarespace. Squarespace is the best place to go if you need to build a website, and best of all, it requires absolutely zero experience to get started. I was able to get my website up and running in just about half an hour with its own customized fonts, colors, images, and even a video playing in the background of the homepage section. Now, you probably already know that Squarespace is the easiest place to get a website up and running, but it's so much more powerful than just a blog or landing page for your personal brand. In fact, we recently used Squarespace as the home for my podcast, GadgetCast, where we even set up a custom storefront selling exclusive GadgetCast hats and patches. This was my first time selling anything online and the experience could not have been easier with Squarespace handling all of the e-commerce for the site and making it easy to accept a wide range of payment options from Stripe, PayPal, and yes, even Apple Pay. Squarespace also connects up to G Suite so you can get your own professional email tied directly to your domain name. And best of all, you can get a 14 day free trial and 10% off your first purchase by going to squarespace.com slash Greg's Gadgets or clicking on the link in the description below. So make sure you check out Squarespace today for all your website, blog, portfolio, and online store needs. And thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. All right, so while my experience with the Mac Mini has been pretty great, there are some shortcomings that I wanted to address. Firstly, there have been some issues with Bluetooth connectivity being spotty or dropping out. This is something that you have been talking about in the comment section, and it's also something that I've seen people experience firsthand. And apparently, this has been an issue predating this Mac Mini. And this has been an issue I have noticed myself over the course of now owning this computer for a month. I would say it really depends on how your Mac Mini is set up, and if your Mac Mini is really close to your Bluetooth peripherals, I don't think you'll notice that much Bluetooth dropout, at least that has been my experience. Now, when I move my mouse farther away, that's when I would notice significant Bluetooth drop off and a really spotty connection. That could be downright annoying. I really noticed it more on my mouse though and haven't experienced it as much with my Bluetooth keyboard. So I'm not sure if maybe it's the Logitech MX Master Mouse that is causing this Bluetooth drop off or if it's just an issue with all Bluetooth accessories. Of course, if you use a wired mouse or a keyboard, you won't have this issue or if you use any of those devices with a USB dongle. However, that's besides the point. And if Apple is saying this device supports Bluetooth, they should do a better job making sure that the signal isn't so easily blocked or interfered with. My second issue that I've had with owning this computer for more than a month now is less about any physical hardware issues and more about the specific specification I chose to go with. 
because for my Mac mini, I decided to save some money and go with the eight gigabytes of memory for the configuration. And while I am still really impressed by how this machine performs with just eight gigabytes of memory, and it's even good enough to handle my 4K video projects that are 10 minutes or shorter, I have noticed that the longer and more complex my 4K video timeline is, the more I notice the mini swapping memory with the solid state drive. This means that I'll get the occasional beach ball when video editing projects that are longer than 10 minutes or projects with multiple streams of 4K video overlaid on top of each other. I know this is a memory issue because on my 13 inch MacBook Pro, I opted for the 16 gigabytes of memory and I don't run into these issues. So for video editors, especially those of you working or planning to work with 4K footage, I would say it's a wise investment now to just upgrade to the 16 gigabyte model. And for that matter, if you know you're probably going to be using this machine for more intensive programs than your standard web browsing, watching videos, taking notes, word processing, or things like that, if you're using this as a budget professional machine, I think my best advice would be to just upgrade the memory and not regret it later because you can't upgrade it yourself. Otherwise, the machine has been great and more and more apps continue to be optimized for Apple Silicon a month later, including Microsoft Office. And they were already running pretty solid through Apple's Rosetta 2 translation layer. And my initial compliments with the Mac mini still stand. The computer has a spinning fan, but you'll rarely ever hear it spin up. The computer runs super cool, so you might need to start keeping a candle or a space heater by your desk in the winter if you're used to your computer heating up your room. Okay, that's, that's just a slight joke. I actually did keep a candle by me while working on today's video because it was pretty cold out. Maybe I shouldn't have bashed Intel Macs for getting so hot. I think they were helping me save some money on my heating bill. All right. So do I still recommend the Mac mini as heavily as I did in my initial review where I said it's the only desktop from Apple you should even consider buying at this point? Well, even with some new complaints, I still think that's the case. And don't be fooled into buying any of the Intel Macs right now unless you need something very specific that only the Intel Mac can do, like boot camp into Windows, or you just have to have that 5K iMac display. But honestly, I would say that the Mac mini really is the only desktop from Apple right now that I would personally spend money on and I would suggest buying right now. So either buy this Mac mini or patiently wait for Apple to update the rest of their Macs with Apple Silicon because it really is that good. All right, everyone, that's what I think about the Mac mini one month later. Please let me know what you think about it in the comments below. If you like this video, be sure to leave me a like. If you wanna see more from my channel, including future videos on M1 Max, make sure you're subscribed. If you wanna help the channel out in any way, make sure you check out the affiliate link in the description. Maybe you could consider purchasing a Mac mini from it. And also don't forget to check out our sponsor for this video, Squarespace. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone. Zero, zero minutes left on the